Hey guys, this is YoMG with another uh, Logic Pro X tutorial. There's a lot of things that look a little different, so hopefully I can help you out with that. Let's jump right in. Uh, first of all, all the key commands and everything you had before will work. If you had a Logic install before, um, your preferences, uh, your templates, all that stuff is going to work pretty well, uh, with the exception of your 32-bit plugins which won't be there. So what we're going to do is you're going to look at this top here and we got a few extra functions. If we grab this little box here, this is going to show us extra features. Now anything, any again key command you had set before to show and hide your transport, it's now at the top instead of at the bottom. What's really helpful if you click the quick help, anything you click on is going to show you exactly what it is. So it's if you're not sure what things are, you can keep that on for a while until you get kind of the, the hang of what's going on. Your auto zoom, split by pay he playhead, split by locators, this whole menu is configurable. Uh, one thing that's kind of cool is your nudge value can constantly be set here and you can set that and then use these mouse buttons, left and right arrows, to click and nudge any of the regions that you have selected. Um, they've added, not only there's a region bin, but now they've added a group bin as well. So your group setting, groups and your settings are available right in the inspector. And again, the key commands are going to show and hide the inspector. Um, one thing that's a little bit different, your library is now on the left. So if you use the library within your EXS24, or if you're using it to pick up sounds, your library is now located on the left. Uh, it's got a little bit sweeter graphical interface to it, but it's basically the same thing. If you are showing your transport here at the top, you can access more functions by clicking this. Uh, same thing is if you, you can now set your transport. So if you don't want to see all of this data, like you want before. You can just show beats and project, beats and time, and just beats. And it shows you a few other options, and that gives you more room to have your settings over here. Depending on your uh, view, you might want. Over to the right, we have the same functions that we had before, but just looking a little different. We've got your lists, which then, of course, you can click on these. And again, all the key commands worked before. Um, you've got your project, which is your notes, and you can do notes for the project and notes for the each individual track. Of course, of course, your Apple loops, and they're still organized the same way. And now you have your project settings where you can basically have your uh, finder built into Logic. And of course, you can audition anything from down here just like you could before, just by clicking the button. Um, over on the other side, you want to notice that the groups are now here together. You can still get them with your menu or with your key command, but you can access them directly. The other thing they have in addition to group is stack tracks. And it's if you use a lot of key commands, you might want to assign a key command to create stack tracks. Any number of instruments can be in a stack track. What you want to do is you want to select all of the instruments and you can hold down the shift key they don't have to be adjacent instruments and then when you select this you want to use either your key command or you want to right click and you're going to create track stack it's going to ask you if you want to create a folder stack folder stack or a summing stack a summing stack is going to do routing and basically automatic automate routing to a particular bus. Folder stack is just like a folder kind of before. Um, and it, of course, if you click on it, it tells you a little uh, information about it, which you can read. We're going to create a folder stack. I'm going to hit create. And you can see now that it gives us a subtrack. And if I click this, it gives us the track from within. And you can see gives us like a graphic uh, interface of what's going on here. Um, we can do a lot of different things to the subtrack that will then affect all of the other tracks. So it gives us a little bit more flexibility in doing so. Um, in any track that you have clicked, or you have in the subtrack, you can open it up and then you can just right click on it. 
and you can either assign it to somewhere else or you can flatten the stack you can remove it from there if you flatten it it basically pulls it back out again uh, another option they give you is with the icons um, before when you had your icon you could click over here on an icon well now they give you lots of different folders uh, and there's there's a way you can customize these two which we'll get into in, in, in another session uh, so you can choose uh, keyboard guitar bass whatever and it gives you lots of different icons um, if you already had some in there before, uh, there's a way you can copy them back in, but again, we'll get into that later. Uh, and one final thing we want to show you here, um, the mixer, although it's basically the same, uh, they give you a few different views and a few other settings. So uh, you want to make sure that you note that the input is now next to, not next to the output. So the input is way up here. If it's an instrument track, your input is going to be uh, a plug-in and it gives you three different options for all the inserts it gives you a, a button where it's going to open the plugin it gives you a bypass on and off button and then it gives you an arrow selection where you can choose another plugin uh, the auxes or the sends are basically the same the out is basically the same the groups are basically the same except for this except for the fact that they give you more options with them uh, it looks a little bit different but uh, the automation and all of that is is really basically the same uh, they they ripped off a of Pro Tools 11 they grabbed the gain reduction and they put a gain meter in the channel strip which is kind of convenient uh, so you can see how much overall gain reduction that you have um, the plugins again are here and you can drag them just like you could before option and, and uh, command do basically the same thing when you go to create a bus it gives you the same thing it just gives you the same options as you had before and uh, down at the bottom they're color coded which looks a little bit different but all your color coding works the same uh, your same key command note the color command window is no longer editable so if you had some crazy colors some grays or blacks or whites you can't do that anymore um, you can't right click you can't do anything it just gives you the basic happy rainbow colors and you got to be happy with them so uh, it might change your colors around a little bit but it essentially is the same all right Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned. I'll give you some more advanced tips later. Later.